Welcome to the course JavaScript for Complete Beginners, and in this video we're going to be talking about flow control, which involves Boolean logic, if statements, switch cases, and try catches. So let's start off with Boolean logic. Booleans are basically another way to represent true and false inside of a computer. So let's first start by writing some Boolean expressions, which basically evaluate to true or false inside the computer. To do so, you need to write a couple of operands, followed by an operator, such as less than, greater than, triple equals in JavaScript to test equality, greater than or equals, less than or equals, or not equals, and then followed by another operand. So to try to understand how these Boolean expressions work, let's go ahead and set age equal to something such as 16, and then run it through our expressions to see how it actually evaluates. So starting off from top to bottom, we say, is 16 not equal to 18? Well, that's true, right? Because 16 is not 18. The second one, we can check, is age less than 18? And that's also true. Is 16 greater than 18? That's false. Is age equal to 18, or is 16 equal to 18? No, so that's also false. Is age greater than or equal to 18? No, that's also false. And then finally, is age less than or equal to 18, which is true. So other than the syntax, which might be a little bit new to you, this should be pretty easy to understand because it's just plain English when written out, such as age less than 18, you should be able to evaluate in your head if that's true or not. So now that we have a decent understanding of how to write Boolean expressions, or at least simple ones, let's move on to how to visualize flow control when a program is executed. So as we learned in previous videos, a program executes line by line doing each command one by one. So each circle here represents a statement in the code. And then on the far left, we're going to go ahead and denote that as the start of our program. And then the far right node, we're going to denote that as the end or the last statement of our program. So notice how in this flow, it's going from left to right with no variation in between. So for really simple programs, this is fine, but in most cases, you're not going to find a program that does some type of logic from start to finish. So it helps to be able to add some type of switch cases or branching behavior to change the flow of execution. So this is where we use our Boolean expressions and Boolean logic into writing things which change the behavior of the program. So for instance, let's say this middle node, instead of it just running from left to right, we want it to change depending on something that happens inside the code. So in this case, there's a branch where there's a possibility of the top or the bottom happening. In this case, we'll denote this as A, and then the bottom will denote it as B. So there's a B branch and an A branch, both which do different code. So using this, let's kind of do a real world example, right? So imagine you have a page where you check the age of the user to see if they're over 18 or not. So in the code, we can have a check on age and then go one branch to say if the user is less than the age of 18, but we need to you know, display an alert or something. And otherwise, if they're greater than or equal to the age of 18, we allow them to use the site as normal. So the X represents, you know, prevent the user and redirect to a different page. So we'll go ahead and remove the existing flow that was going to those right nodes from that branch and the left one will stay as is. So almost always you can write your code in this kind of flow chart manner, so it's good to kind of understand how to visualize your code because when it becomes you know, written on paper, it's very linear and it's hard to see how the branches occur. So now that we had a little bit of an overview of how to write Boolean expressions and how flow control works, let's go ahead and start writing some code in the editor. So the first thing in flow control I want to talk about is if statements. So let's go ahead and start writing some code to demonstrate how to use if statements and the syntax for using if statements. So starting off, an if statement starts with the keyword if, followed by some parentheses, followed by a Boolean expression, so we can say age less than 18, followed by a block of curly braces. So let's go ahead and define age up here to be, let's say, 20. And then inside our block, we can go ahead and print out something such as if executed. So if we were to run this program, we can tell 
that the if statement should not be executed because age is not less than 18. So to verify that, let's just go ahead and run our program, and we see that nothing prints out to the console. But then if we were to go here and change the age variable to, let's say, something like 10, and rerun the program, we see that if executed is printed out because the if statement is printed or is executed to true. So the second part of an if statement is the else statement that you can attach to the end. And basically what this does is it's going to execute this else block whenever any of the statements above in the if statement are false. So to demonstrate that, again, we can change age back to 21. And if we were to run this, it should be obvious that the else will be taken because age is now greater than 18. So this executes the false, which means the else should be taken. And then the third part of if statements is the else if statement, which can be used or written with this syntax. In this case, we'll say else if age is equal to 21. We could just print out else if executed. So now if we were to run this program, we can obviously tell that this is false, this is true, and the else should not be taken because this one already executed. So I'll go ahead and clear the console and run that. And we see that else if executed is printed out to the console. So just remember that these two, the else if and the else, are optional. You don't need to have these attached to your if statement. The else can only exist once. You can't have two else's attached. So if I were to do this and try to run this program, it's going to throw an exception. And then lastly, you can have multiple else ifs attached to each other. So if you see here, we can say else if 19, else if 20, and else if 21. And if we were to run this program now, it'll just print out or run whatever block statement is inside here. And just to demonstrate the block statement, let's go ahead and just reduce it back to a really basic if statement, which will execute the true. And just know that we can put as many commands or whatever inside this as we want. And we can also nest additional statements inside here. which you can see prints out all these if executed. And then we do check age again here, and we print out nested. So that's a basic overview of if statements. I mean, you can use more expressive Boolean expressions here if you want to, and we'll probably cover that later on. But just know for the most part that you can do if statement, if else, and then else if statements inside of that. So let's move on to the switch, case, the switch statements which is a different way to do branching or flow control in your program. So the switch statement starts with the syntax switch followed by some type of variable that you want to check. So in this case, we'll do gender followed by some curly braces. And then inside the switch statement, you're going to add different case statements. So case, let's say M, we want to print out was male break case f printout was female break and then lastly the kind of else statement for a switch is the default statement and this can be used if neither of the ones above were executed so before i run this i'll go ahead and set gender equal to m just to demonstrate how this works and I'll run our program. And we see that since we set M, our gender to M, the first case is going to print out. If we change it to F, the second case is going to print out. And if we change it to O, the default's going to print out. Now, one little caveat of the switch statement is this whole break thing that we add in. Basically, if you fail to put this break statement in, it's going to cascade and run the following one below. So for instance, if we were to have gender as M, it's going to run this one and then carry on and run this one as well. 
So to demonstrate that, you see how printed out was male and then also printed out was female. So, I mean, this, this behavior can be useful sometimes, but for the most part, you just want to remember to always add a break case or a break statement in your case statements so that it doesn't fall over or cascade and run the uh, preceding case statements. All right, so we covered if statements, we covered switch statements. The last thing to cover would be the try catch, which is another way to kind of control flow in your program if you're doing any type of error catching or error handling. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so let's move on to the, the last part of the flow control, which is the try catch statements. The syntax for a try catch is very simple. Simple. It's just try, the keyword try, followed by curly braces, followed by the keyword catch, followed by some parentheses with the variable that you want to put the error into, and then again another set of curly braces. So just to demonstrate what happens, if I were to run this simple try catch, should be obvious to know that there is no error inside this try block. Therefore, the catch statement is never going to execute. So if we wanted to get the try or the catch statement to execute, we could just throw an error here in which JavaScript will um, propagate that error up, catch it, and then run our catch block here. So if I were to go ahead and just clear that and run this, we can demonstrate how this line is never ran because the program will kind of break out on line six and then execute our catch statement. So this whole try catch thing is a little bit more advanced and you'll see it later on. Some use cases would be like, you're trying to contact the server, the server's not up, so what do you do? You might wanna sleep for a second and then try it again or sleep for five seconds or whatnot. And then the only way you know the server's not up is that it throws an error somewhere down using the Node.js framework or the node, node libraries or some third-party library throws an error and you need to catch it to make sure your program stays running. All right, so that pretty much covers how to do flow control. And I think later on in the videos, you'll see more advanced examples of flow control and how they're useful. And hopefully this was a good overview of Boolean expressions and Boolean logic because you're gonna be using those when we get to looping and other parts of the videos in the future. All right, thanks for watching. That concludes this video. Be sure to subscribe and like if you enjoyed the tutorial and feel free to give me any feedback in the future. Thanks.